morning starting off today with a leaking c63 so i've been having it that oftentimes i get in the car and the low coolant light comes on so then you check the reservoir which will probably now be completely empty um I've already jacked up the car before and took the under tray off. However, it was close to impossible to try and pinpoint the leak. Um, that's the drain bolt that broke off, but it's not leaking from there. Uh, it's coming from basically all around the lower section of the radiator, even from the top. Very hard to, to see. So I think the only alternative now is to start basically removing the radiator. We'll just start taking off these plastic air ducts, which just pull off, super simple. We'll take this uh, basic cross plastic piece of, uh, off. Then we got to remove the fan. Um, majority of the stuff is literally just clipped in. For example, for this plastic, uh, I guess, cosmetic, cover it was just one little plastic bolt in the front and then it has these retaining clips here which you just pull back and pop off now we can see that the radiator is only held on actually by four bolts i believe plus this um front bracing and then we've got pretty good access to the fan which just slides into those pins um we'll remove the coolant lines and just double check that there's no oil or transmission coolers that actually run through the radiator as well uh, which I hope it doesn't and then we can lift her out it's got all that removed now you have these tabs that the radiator slides into uh, sorry the radiator fan slides into so all we have to do is just lift it up and there are <clears throat> connectors that we'll have to undo behind this plastic cover here underneath quite hard to reach from the top We'll try to lift it out and see if we can reach them. So from underneath, we can see the uh, electrical connector for the fan itself. So we'll unplug that. And we've also got these tabs underneath here, which basically hold in the shroud. So we'll undo those, uh, disconnect the connector, and then hopefully be able to slide it up out upwards. So these you just push to the side basically to remove easier with two hands there we go now we can pop off these clips which basically you just pull upwards you don't have to completely remove them but you'll see basically there's a tab where they'll rest into once you loosen them up and then you can just pull out this metal sleeve on both sides plus this um i'm not sure yet if the condenser and oil cooler are attached to the radiator there do seem to be some clips here that hold them together well this escalated quickly <laughs> so in the end it is easier to take off the front bumper so that you can remove i believe this is the transmission cooler this will be the oil cooler uh, and then you have the power steering cooler and the condenser. Um, so those are mostly just held in by some sort of plastic clips, which you can see here, which you just lever out forward. Uh, the oil cooler had two bolts on the side that you had to take out, so then you can drop it and slide it out, and it separates from the radiator. Um, and then there was just one very annoying eight millimeter bolt that basically held on the um, was it the AC line and the power steering cooler line. Now, hopefully, we can split these two and uh, lift them out individually. So after fighting for at least half an hour, no space whatsoever. There's a lot of wiggling back and forth, but finally she's out. And what I've come to realize is that the leak might actually be from 
this drain hole. So what I thought was that that bung basically gets screwed out completely and the water comes out the bottom. But I believe you turn it out halfway and then the rest of it, as you can see in there, the red uh, bung, the rest of it then comes out this hole. So since this is, uh, I'll put a picture of it now. There is basically an upper and a lower O-ring. So maybe the upper O-ring is leaking, which is in turn making it come out from that hole. But now we'll get it pressure tested uh, and see, so I'm not gonna mess with that and just see where exactly it is leaking from. Since I thought it was along these seams cause they tend to corrode after a while and leak. So instead of replacing the complete radiator, if we just have to replace that bung, that would be very beneficial. And I know a lot of people remove the front bash bar and then just remove this piece completely as one, uh, which is a lot easier. However, that means you'll have to regas your AC. Uh, a lot of transmission fluid will come out, uh, power steering fluid, engine oil. So there's just a lot more stuff that will make a lot bigger of a mess and uh, a lot of stuff you'll have to refill afterwards. So this is just a bit more convenient. Let's see where she leaks. We've got our radiator back. I managed to find a shop that basically what they do is they close every single port in the, um, in the radiator, pump it full of air, hold it under water and see where uh, air bubbles come through. And then you can basically pinpoint the leak. So here is our old plastic side piece, as you can see, identical. And initially I thought maybe the bung was leaking uh, this is the drain bung and it has some small o-rings that it was maybe after a while seeping through however after they did their pressure tests if you can see that there is a nice crack along the so that is the the pin that holds the condenser to the radiator and even from the inside you can just barely see a hairline crack so that would have been what was leaking the whole time and instead of replacing the complete radiator, which I got a quote for for around eight to nine hundred dollars, this piece plus installation and pressure testing it only cost us seventy dollars. So so. Before putting it back in, just got some new O-rings to change for the coolant pipes that slide into the radiator, just to make sure that we minimize all sorts of leaks. And then we'll slide it back in. And hopefully I have it started today. Sliding the radiator in uh, was quite the struggle as clearing these oil lines on this side turned out to be a lot harder than we thought. But she's in. Uh, we replaced the O-rings for the radiator pipes, uh, put some lubrication on them before pushing them in. Now to connect the front support, there are some clips here, as you can see, where um, the front I guess support clips into so that gets pushed in there and then we have an alignment hole up here which this beautiful shim then slides over and locks it in place it's got an opening on one side we'll just place it next to it and push it on locked pretty smart system you feel safe Got both on now we reposition all the coolers that we loosened and just make sure they're refastened in this front support bracket. It's just, just plastic clips that hold it in, clipped in one, push it up. Quite hard with okay, so one. As you can see, these are literally just held in by some tabs that get pushed uh, back or down and then it slides out. So we reclip that in. Now, next step, we gotta reconnect our engine oil cooler, which was held in by this plastic bracing. You know, all this is just porous rubber that's fallen off because it's dried out after all that time in the sun. So we relift this up, reposition the, the bracket, which gets clipped into here. And that should then hold on out. Forward a bit. <laughs> we put the radiator support back on, uh, filled it with coolant started it up uh didn't put the bumper back on just yet so we're able to inspect if we have any sort of oil leaks or coolant leaks 
check every single fitting to make sure we uh, aren't leaking from anywhere. Looks pretty good. And then we'll wait until the pan turns on and we're at operating temperature and then we can refill that once the thermostat opens. Run it for a while, no leaks from underneath. Put the lower cover back on. Made sure everything up top is nice and tight. Refilled the coolant once it was up to operating temperature because then the thermostat opens and allows more coolant to get circulated throughout the engine. So now we're just gonna put these ducts back on and take it for a test drive.